Greetings, my fellow eagles and the entire world. This is Eagle Emmanuel Mensah with inspirations and guidance from Eagle Helen Mensah in the unseen world. Coming into your homes and your minds with a message of empowerment and enlightenment. Today is the 25th of June in the year 2024. And the Bible says this is the day the Lord has made and therefore we should rejoice and be glad in it. And for that matter, I take this opportunity to invite the whole world to join me to give thanks to God for the day that he has granted unto us. And life in general, life is beautiful, life is wonderful, life is glorious, life is God himself flowing through all things, including mankind. Today, I'm going to speak to you on the topic, your freedom is your own personal issue. I repeat, your personal freedom is all about your beliefs that you hold. Now, I have been speaking about freedom, and we are looking at it from different angles. So today we are going to look at freedom, personal freedom, as human beings, and all of us, our freedom put together becomes our collective freedom. And therefore, today, I'm going to look at this from a different angle. And... But before we go on, I would like to make the statement that human beings are more accustomed to bondage than freedom. It is a mathematical truth. And if you don't know, you can just make a simple uh, analysis. Take the color red as you know it to be. Assuming when you were born, one, and you, you came into the hands of your parents and they intentionally introduced the color right to you as blue. Believe it or not, that would be what you would grow to hold, to be as the color red. You will not call it red, you call it blue because that is what has been introduced to you. And therefore, if any man or woman from anywhere trying to correct you, you will challenge the person because for you, in your own world, based on what your parents taught you, and even maybe after you entered the school system, the school system also reinforced it. And therefore, you know from within you that this is what you've been taught as red. But as a matter of fact, that is not red, that is blue. Because your, only, your mom and dad only introduced blue to you as red. And so you are holding a distorted a view or understanding of that color. And that is what it is with every one of us. And therefore, when most of the things that we know, someone tries to challenge or present alternative, we go to all length to defend. And even uh, we, we, we brand those people as controversial. And I am someone who has actually received that kind of title, especially from my fellow Christians, people who knew you, that you used to be part of them, worship, going to church and all those things. And now you are telling them that this is not true. But I'm not even saying that I don't go to church. But when, when the controversy actually comes in, where the controversial title normally comes in, when you tell people that, that, that there is no devil. Demons and other things are imaginary things. And then people turn around and tell you, you are controversial. Things that has been handed down to us, even in the Bible, and you are trying to, I mean, go against it. But the fact is, these things are not true. And today, this is the area that we are looking our freedom from. Uh, without any disrespect, but as a matter of fact, a universal truth, especially those of us in Africa, Almost everyone in the Christian cycle is not free. We are not free because we have been introduced to concepts that builds or that was built upon the, the fact that we are always under attack. There are some other things that are attacking us. And therefore, our personal freedom is always not complete. And uh, if we go back to our own countries, in almost every nation, especially those that use English language, 
In the constitution of every nation, there is the word called inalienable right that every citizen in a particular country like Ghana, Nigeria, we have inalienable rights as citizens. No one can attack our or deny us our right to be citizens of our nation. That means it is not questionable. It's supreme. And therefore, if you are a Ghanaian, for example, and you are doubting your right as a citizen of Ghana because you think someone is fighting against or someone is trying to, yeah, fighting against your right of being a citizen of Ghana, then you are not free. You are under attack. A nation that is under attack is no more a free nation. And that is what we are. Every human being, especially those of us in the religious circles, we are always under attack. And therefore, our personal freedom is not complete. It's questionable. And this is where we are looking at our freedom from. The fact is that you were created and born free. And uh, invoking the words of the Swiss uh, philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau, that man is born free and everywhere in chains. We are born, we are created and born free. We are born into this world free. But we put ourselves in chains by the beliefs and the concepts that we hold. And so when we, even when you were in your mother's womb, your parents and the society were already, already drumming, uh, beating the drums of evil, devil, demons. And then you were born into it. And so you automatically download these things and that becomes your way of life. And therefore, we live and do everything under fear, worry, anxiety. Not for any other reason, but for the fact that there are some other forces that are fighting against us. And so your freedom is questionable. It is, it is no more inalienable, but it is a questionable freedom. Therefore, no one can set you free from this. And no one can release you except you releasing yourself. And so, as a matter of fact, especially once again with my brothers and sisters in the Christian family, we defend the devil more than God. Most people will, be, will feel comfortable when you tell them that there is a devil and not even mentioning God's name. If you tell them that God is supreme, God is omnipotent, God is all that there is, and therefore he cannot have an opposition, they will fight you. But if you tell them that, yeah, it is true that the devil exists, they will agree with you and you'll be their friend. They will, they will not call you controversial. And so you will see that even the very thing that we are trying to, or we, we are claiming that we believe in and we worship, which is God, we are denying his existence all the time. And therefore, we are putting ourselves in bondage. God has given us the right, the freedom to live and be and do whatever we want to do. But we are holding ourselves hostage, captive by our beliefs. And so this concept that has been introduced to us as devil, demons, evil spirits, they are not something that are true, but it is just the belief that has been held and as beliefs kept, uh, keep on, uh, we keep on repeating these beliefs, they begin to manifest in our lives. And so I have people who have told me that they have evidence of days and died, witches, and how they've seen in the light of witches and other things. But the fact is that that is the dominant thought of the society, the collective consciousness, the beliefs of the people. And this thought manifested in their lives. And therefore, since they got an ex uh, evidence of that manifestation, they take it as the truth. But that is not the truth. That is your own creation. And uh, if we are to go back in our lives, those of us in Africa, some years or some time past, Africans, we used, they used to believe in what we call dwarfs. There were dwarfs and other things and all those kind of things. Even uh, man-made and all those things. Now, no one talks about these things then no one talks about dwarves. Why? Because Christianity came and broke some of these beliefs. And since the beliefs are, we've started, we've started moving away from the beliefs, the manifestation also disappears. And so, the devil that you are fighting, whatever you are fighting as your enemy, 
is your own creation and it, you are having evidence of that because of your belief. It is your own beliefs. Your own thoughts are being manifested in your life. And no one can free you from this except yourself. God has created you as a free, independent human being that has the right to be, do, and have anything. And therefore, you are not under bondage. You are not under attack by anyone. If you are under attack by anyone, that means it is you. So your freedom is not questionable. Your freedom is inalienable. And therefore, you can only make it a freedom that can be assailed, that can be uh, attacked by other people, only when you create that belief in your own life. And so, you need to set yourself free from all this. There is nowhere in our life that you will go, that you will not see people going about, dreading, doing everything that they are protecting themselves. And as they do that, they keep on building all these things and they get evidence. As a matter of fact, if you're a human being and you go to bed and you carry the thoughts of fear, worry, of being attacked by evil forces, and therefore you do this, you do that, you do that, to be honest with you, you are a slave. You are a slave. And so the thoughts about the, these forces, whenever it comes into your mind, you are you, just like the way I used the anal analogy yesterday, a puppet. Any thought about a demon, it pulls you, and then you have to dance to it. You have to run to your man of God. You have to run to this. Anything that comes that someone is, you are under attack by someone, you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do that. You see? And so all these things are our own creation, but you have the right and freedom to set yourself free. No one can set, your, set you free except yourself. And as uh, Rousseau observed, that you are born free, man is born free, a man or woman is born free, and everywhere in chains. The chains that you are in is in your mind, and you have to emancipate yourself. You are free. You are a free human being, and therefore, God's presence is always around you. And instead of we, I mean, big beating the drum of the existence of the devil, let us beat the drums of the existence of God, the supremacy of God. And once we establish this in our lives, the devil actually disappear in our life. The devil exists in your life only in, to the degree at which you, I mean, affirm his existence. As a matter of fact, the devil is existence in your life only to the degree to which you affirm his existence. In the same way, the devil disappears, demons and other things disappear in your life only to the degree to which you ignore their existence. And so, either way, you are to create it. God has given you the power. You are the extension of God. And therefore, the way to set ourselves free is to begin to take power from the center of ourselves. God has created you as a powerful and a wonderful being. And he has given you a very powerful tool. That is your internal guidance. Every human being has this guidance. You know how you are feeling. When thoughts about the demon about the devil appears in your mind. How do you feel? If you are not feeling good, that means these thoughts are chopping away your entire life. You need to do something about it. And that means your belief about the existence of the devil and those things is not good for you. And therefore you need to look for something that will bring peace and harmony to you. And that is you looking at God as the omnipotent, omnipresent God. Be peaceful, be calm, and then be in alignment with God. And you see that you have peace. You have peace that surpasses all understanding. You become a fortitude. Nothing can attack you. The only thing that can attack you is only when you allow it into your life, into your consciousness. And so, you have freedom that is not limited. Unlimited freedom. But you limit yourself only when you establish another entity as a powerful entity that goes against you, that is fighting against you as an extension of God. You demean your divinity. You reduce yourself to a puppet that always the demons, the devils have to pull. As soon as a thought about this comes into your mind, you shrink. As soon as a thought about this comes into your mind, you shrink. And so, uh, once again, in the Christian uh, circles, especially the Pentecostals and Charismatics, 
Then the person shouts, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this, I rebuke that. You see, you are praying in fear. And any man or woman that is praying in fear has no connection with God. That is a fact. And therefore, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. God is pure. God is true. You are an extension of this powerful force. Therefore, you need to take your rightful place in the universe. That is, that is to take a stand and know and believe that you are an integral part of God. You are an extension of God. Therefore, God cannot be defeated. God cannot be attacked. God cannot live under fear and worry. But God is supreme. God is free. God is beautiful and wonderful. And it is only when you begin to entertain these fears and that the devil would disappear in your life. As a matter of fact, just as we created a devil, in the same way we kill God. We kill God. The moment you accept the existence of the devil in your life and you magnify it, it becomes your predominant thought, then you negate the existence of God in your life. And therefore you begin, you continue to create negativity. You continue to create negative experiences. And then you take those experiences and show to the world that you see. These are the evidence that what I'm thinking, what I believe exists. But that is not the truth. That is not the truth. And as, as I said, in the olden days, our forefathers used to believe that, they used to say that they used to see dwarves and some kind of horrendous things. Those things have disappeared. Man and woman has moved from that consciousness to a newer consciousness. And that is what we are seeing now. We are not seeing those things now. So it is. Your personal freedom is supreme. Your personal freedom is complete. You are not under attack of anything. You are not under the influence of anything outside you. The only thing that is fighting your freedom and your peace and your success is yourself. What you have within you, the beliefs that you hold within you. So, you are a free person. You were born, you were created and born free. But you've been sold. All right, some concepts have been sold to you. The concept of devil, the concept of demon, the concept of witches were those that were sold to us. And as I started, if the color red was introduced to you as blue, you would have accepted it as blue, and that would be blue for you in your life now, all of us. But it was introduced to us as red, and that is what we hold. Therefore, what you hold is a distorted view. That is not the real view. You need to change it. If uh, by a mistake or, yeah, just by any arrangement, your parents introduced the red to you, and now you are in the system, you will find a way to correct it. And this is the time that you need to correct it. Humanity has traveled far such that our consciousness, our awareness, our knowledge about these things has increased. And therefore, you don't have to continue to live in bondage. Free yourself. You are a free human being. You are a complete free, uh, free human being without limitation, without anything. You have the power and ability to be, to do, and have anything. Nothing is against you. And nothing can ever be against you unless you give your mental consent to it. And so your personal freedom is your own work. Your personal freedom is your own work. And you have to begin to pull down all these things. And as I said, no one, and I, in particular, I still consider myself as a Christian. I'm not against Christian, but I'm just speaking the truth. Some things that are limiting our progress, some the, the beliefs and thoughts that have been sold to us that we have practiced that are limiting our progress. And we need to wake up. You need to wake up. You have to do your own personal analysis. Just ask yourself. If you say you are free and you can't go to bed without having a peaceful mind but only praying and bombarding evil spirit before you go to bed, that means you are not free. You are not free. You are afraid of some perceived enemies. And any man or woman that is afraid of perceived enemies, it's not, it's not free. You are under attack. You confess it. You do. You say it all the time. I mean, you are not free. So you cannot say you are free. It's a contradiction. If you say you are free, and at the same time, you are under attack. It's a contradiction. And so God has given every one of us the freedom to be, and to do, and to have anything. And until we stand up, until we take our minds, and begin to look at things from the right perspective, and have that concept, all the supreme concept that God is all that there is. There is only one spirit. 
There is only one presence. There is only one energy. No opposition. All other things that we see, all other things that we experience are our own concept and beliefs that we've generated and they, they keep manifesting in our lives. And then we take them as evidence of what we hold. But that is not the truth. The truth is that God is, there is only one God. There is only one spirit. There is only one spirit, presence. And you and me, all of us, are the extension of this one true spirit called God. And so long, as soon as we take our rightful place and become aligned with this presence, we become invincible. Men and women that live, walk and live and do things as free, independent people that are not afraid of anything. That is my message for you. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. As Jesus Christ said, and the truth is what I've just presented to you. Set yourself free. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds from all limitations, regardless of all limitations. That is my message for you. Now, may the overshadowing presence of God that keeps the stars in the open such that they do not fall on us, that keeps the planets in their orbit such that they do not clash with one another, organize and I mean, organize your life, guide and lead you in such a way that you will be awakened to your indwelling powers and you'll take your true place in the universe. Then walk and organize your life as a true human being, free from all kinds of limitation, no enemy, no adversary. But there is only one presence that we are all co-creating and moving and evolving as one being as uh, images and the true likeness of the true God. Thank you and God bless you.